couple of months ago I made a video about a wall box that had been converted to be an mp3 playing jukebox. The whole idea was to create a 1950s diner aesthetic in my conservatory. At the time I hadn't got the table and chairs and some people wanted to see what those looked like so here's what it looks like now it's all finished. However this isn't a video about a table and chairs. No this is a video about the speakers that I got to go with this. So let me show those to you now. Now when I first started looking for speakers I thought maybe I'd get something to go with the period, perhaps some repurposed drive-in movie speakers and you can get those on Etsy but I decided perhaps a little bit fiddly for the room and then I thought maybe a old vintage radio that's been repurposed to be a Bluetooth compatible device but again decided not to bother. In the end I thought I'd get something that's more in keeping with the rest of the room and I got some Kanto YU3 speakers. Now these compact bookshelf speakers, as well as being self-powered, therefore not needing an external amplifier for my MP3 player, are also very capable. And looking at the reviews on Amazon, everyone seems very happy with them. So that encouraged me to import some from the US, which is where these are from, from Amazon.com. I've got links in the video description. As you can see, we've got a volume control on the front and IR port on there as well. And then round the back, we've got quite a few things. I'll get the other stuff out of the box and we'll go through all this. That's a three and a half millimeter audio lead we've got a speaker cable to connect the two speakers together remote control and because I've imported this from the US the power lead is one that's designed to plug into US sockets however not a problem at all because it's just a standard figure of eight lead and I can swap my own out because if you look at the back of the speaker at the bottom here it's a multi voltage device 100 to 240 volts so all I need to do is just get rid of the US plug replace it with a standard figure of eight lead that I can use in a UK power socket. Now I'll just have a quick look at the remote control. As you can see, quite a few controls on here, which gives you an idea of the sophistication of these speakers. We can adjust the bass and the treble. And notice underneath those is a backward circular arrow, which will reset it back to standard. And we can adjust the balance and play pause, skip tracks when we're using on Bluetooth. And talking of which, if we look at the inputs at the top, there's quite a lot there. You've got RCA, auxiliary, optical one and two and Bluetooth. So there's five different inputs that you can put into the back of these speakers. You can see them here on the left. We've got the RCA left and right stereo plugs. We've got the auxiliary lead, the three and a half millimeter jack below that. We've got the connector in the middle to connect to the other speaker and two opticals on the right. But notice also there's a sub out on there. If you've got a powered sub, you can plug it into that and have more bass, of course, but they're quite decent basic speakers anyway. Oh, and I nearly forgot to mention, there's also a USB port on the back that could provide 5 volts, 1 amp worth of power, which you could use to charge your mobile device while you were, say, playing it through the speakers. And the other speaker, in comparison, pretty simple back on that, just the connectors to connect to the first speaker. Now let's just take the plastic off the remote control as well, because that's supposed to be a glossy remote control, as you can see there. And also put the batteries in it, which are provided inside the box. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm going to connect the two speakers together using the supplied speaker cable. Using these binding posts, you can just connect that through the little pins on there and tighten them up. But those also accept banana plugs, and that's what I've actually used in my real setup. And I've got the speakers quite a bit further apart because it's only a 10 foot lead. I plugged my auxiliary input into there, which is coming from my MP3 player. So let's just have a quick listen. Now to avoid falling foul of copyright, I can't really play you anything back of course, but these are Kevlar drivers and we've got silk dome tweeters at the top. The whole thing sounds great, it's just you'll never really hear it properly over YouTube anyway because it's going to be compressed down. Now the speakers themselves, as you can see, really nicely constructed, all one piece, you can't see any joins on these at all. Uh, at the bottom there you can actually put some feet on it if you don't want it to scratch your furniture or scratch the bottom of the speaker either way. So I'll put some of those on there that were out of the packet. Also stops it sliding around a little bit I suppose. Now just inside the instructions here we'll just have a quick look. Those are the things that we got inside the box which we've already seen. And I'll just flip through and we'll just look at these specs at the back of here because some people will be interested in these. So pause it now if you want to know all about the frequency response and all that kind of stuff. Weights and sizes. All all on screen now. In real terms, those dimensions mean that the speakers are slightly taller than a DVD, but about the same depth. 
Now one very simple but very handy feature is the fact that these speakers remember the settings that they were on when you last used them. So all you have to do, for example, if I put it into Bluetooth mode and switch it off, next time I switch it on, it'll go straight into the Bluetooth mode, which has been handy because the other day I came home, the missus was listening to some streaming music on her tablet. She was listening to it through the built-in speakers. It didn't sound too good. I thought maybe I should try using the Bluetooth function on these speakers. And sure enough, once I've got it set up, all she has to do now is just turn on the power on the speakers the speakers take over the sound from the iPad you can listen to the music through the Bluetooth speakers really good quality and then whenever you want to switch back to listening to the music back on the built-in speakers again all you have to do just turn the power off and the sound reverts back to the internal speakers on the iPad so whilst I only bought these speakers for one purpose, the Bluetooth functionality as well as the expansion options for different inputs on the back means that they're going to get a lot more use than I was expecting when I first got them. Now they're not a cheap speaker, but then again, they're not a cheap speaker if you know what I mean. It's a well put together speaker and it sounds great. And if you want to get hold of one, there's some links in the video description. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.